in this section we will take up nomenclature of the enzymes nomenclature means naming system that we are discussing here so there are various ways in which enzymes have been named. We will take some old methods and then we will come to the most recent method. The first and the old method was putting a suffix ASE to the root word. Suffix ASE to the root word. And let us take a couple of examples. If the substrate is maltose, that is malt becomes the root word. So for that, the enzyme which is going to act on this, we remove this O-S-E, root word remains malt and we add A-S-E. So as soon as we add A-S-E, now it is an enzyme which is acting on the root word or the substrate malt. So enzyme becomes maltase. Similarly, substance is sucrose. We remove this OSE and we add ASE to it. So it becomes sucrase. As soon as this ASE word is added, that means that substance is the enzyme acting on that particular substrate. This was one old method. Many times we still follow it. The next method is from the source. So name an enzyme on the basis of source. On the basis of source. From where it has been obtained. One example is the enzyme's name is bromelin. It is also written as bromelin. L-A-I-N. L-I-N is also written and L-A-I-N is also written. So this is OR, both the names for the same thing. And its source is pineapple, which belongs to bromeliaceae family. Bromeliaceae family. And so the name of the enzyme is bromelin, named after the source, that is the family. The second example of the enzyme is pepe. It is obtained from papaya and so the name. So this is also one method. The third method which we talk of when it comes to naming is slightly advanced but not the most recent one. It is still considered uh, or we can say it is many a times used. The enzyme should be given two word names. The first word would represent the substrate and the second word would talk about the type of reaction which the enzyme is catalyzing. So here there would be two words given. The first one to the substrate and the second word would be for the reaction. One example that we can talk of is pyruvate decarboxylase. So if we write pyruvate, this becomes the first word that is substrate and decarboxylase, this becomes the type of reaction. That means this enzyme is removing carbon dioxide from pyruvate or pyruvic acid. So this is also one method of naming the enzymes. Now we will talk about the most recent method of naming and this is given by International Union of Biochemistry. International Union of Biochemistry. According to this, the enzymes have been given some numbers and names. The number which is given is written as EC numbers. EC stands for Enzyme Commission Numbers. And there are six groups in which the enzymes have been classified. 
these groups are the major groups and their classification into these six groups is based on the type of reactions that they perform. So we will write down these six first and then we'll take up some examples. The first one which is written as EC1, enzyme commission number one. That those enzymes, they are kept in a group called oxidoreductase. This is the first one. The second, EC2, that means all the enzymes which are kept in this group, they are known as transferases. Third, EC3, they are called hydrolases. Hydrolases. Fourth one, that is EC4, they are called lyases. EC5, they are known as isomerases. Isomerases. And EC6, uh, I'm going to write it here, EC6 are known as ligases. So these are, sorry, ligase, L-I-G-A-S-E-S, -S, ligases. These are the six groups into which the enzymes have been classified according to the most recent system of classification which was given by International Union of Biochemistry. Now we will take up all these six categories of enzymes and we'll see what kind of reactions do they help in and at least one example which can be kept under this category. So let us discuss these six categories one by one. The first category was of oxidoreductases. As the name tells us, it is helping in oxidation and reduction reactions. We can take the examples of cytochrome oxidase. It helps in uh, electron transport chain in transfer of electrons during cellular respiration. We can also take example of phosphoglycerol dehyde dehydrogenase. This is also an enzyme which is helping in uh, glycolysis. Uh, this is also in the same category but, but here it is oxidase. This is again in the same category oxidoreductase but here it is helping in primarily the reduction process. But we know that when reduction is taking place one substance gets reduced the other gets oxidized. So basically they are helping in redox reactions. If you are able to uh, recall this reaction where 3PGAL is ultimately converted into 1,3-DIPGA that is aldehyde is getting converted into an acid that is the time where this dehydrogenase it helps and what is this dehydrogenase doing? It is helping in removal of hydrogen and that hydrogen is taken by NAD and it gets converted into NADH2. So from PGAL that is phosphoglyceraldehyde, hydrogen is removed. So it is helping in dehydrogenation. So whether it is helping in addition of hydrogen or removal of hydrogen, addition of oxygen or removal, we keep all these enzymes in the same category as oxidoreductases. This is the first group of enzymes. The second group of enzymes is of transferases. Transferases. And again, as the name tells us, they must be helping in transfer of something. What is that something? That is a functional group. So now, depending upon which functional group they are helping uh, in the transfer of, that would give the name. Suppose it is helping in transfer of an amino group, then we will call it transaminase. If it is helping in transfer of a carboxyl group, then we call it transcarboxylase. 
We'll again take one example here and that is of glutamate pyruvate transaminase. Reaction is glutamic acid that is glutamate plus pyruvate and from glutamic acid amino group is transferred to pyruvic acid and what we get here is alanine and alpha ketoglutarate and the enzyme which is helping here is glutamate pyruvate transaminase that means it is helping in transfer of amino group from glutamate to pyruvate and that is why we are using the term as transferase for this group of enzymes. Third category is of hydrolases. Hydrolases are the enzymes which break a bond by addition of water. <coughs> by addition of water. They normally work by addition of water. All our digestive enzymes, they come in this category. So here we will take example. <coughs> Starch is acted upon by amylase. And this amylase can come from saliva. So we will call it salivary amylase or it can also come from pancreatic juice. Then we will call it pancreatic amylase. And the starch will be broken down into maltose, isomaltose and limit dextrins. And these bonds which are in the starch molecule, they are, they are broken with the help of this enzyme which breaks the bond by addition of water. Because in case of starch, the bonds which are there are the glycosidic bonds. And these glycosidic bonds are formed by dehydration synthesis. Same is the case with peptide bonds and ester bonds. So whenever these bonds are to be broken, simply water is required and the enzymes, they work on this. So basically, they are our digestive enzymes. So our digestive enzymes, they come in the category of hydrolases. The fourth category is of lyases. They also break the bonds, but without addition of water. Without addition of water. They also break the bond. We'll take again one example here. I'm going to write this NADH2 here so that we can write the reaction in this part. So here, if again you're able to recall the reaction in glycolysis. Fructose 1,6-biphosphate is broken down into two 3-carbon compounds. One is 3-PGAL, phosphoglyceraldehyde. The same one which we were talking about in case of this reaction where oxidoreductases are used. And the second substance is dihydroxyacetone phosphate. These are the two 3-carbon compounds that we get. And the enzyme which works here is aldolase. And aldolase breaks a 6-carbon compound into two 3-carbon compounds but without addition of water. So aldolase would come in the category of lyase. Fifth category of enzymes, they are called isomerases. Isomerases would convert one isomer into the other one. And the easiest example that we can take up here is glucose 6-phosphate is converted into fructose 6-phosphate. Glucose and fructose are isomers. Again, this is a reaction in glycolysis. And the enzyme which helps is an isomerase. We can give it multiple names. We can call it glucose fructose isomerase. 
Both the sugars are hexose sugars. We can also call it hexose isomerase. So the enzyme here is hexose isomerase. We can again give it a specific name depending upon what is getting converted into what. So glucose to fructose, so it can be glucose fructose isomerase. If it was reverse, we would have called it fructose glucose isomerase. And the last category, I'm writing this last category here, these are ligases. The sixth group, ligases. Ligases are joining enzymes. They help in formation of new bonds. Here, pyruvic acid and carbon dioxide, they bind to form a four carbon compound that is oxaloacetic acid. This is one step in photosynthetic reaction. What is happening? Two substances are joining. The enzyme which is helping is actually helping in formation of bonds. Carbon dioxide will get added to pyruvic acid. So the enzyme would be called pyruvate carboxylase. Carboxylase. And this is pyruvic acid is a three carbon compound. One carbon is coming from carbon dioxide and we get a four carbon compound that is oxaloacetic acid. So here new bonds are formed and that is done by the enzymes which we keep in the category of ligases like pyruvate carboxylase. So these are the six groups of enzymes and their names are given according to the International Union of Biochemistry. This is the most recent classification. But as I said in the beginning, we still use certain common things. Though it does not tell us anything. For example, pepsin. We know it is acting on protein. It breaks peptide bonds. We know about it. But the name pepsin doesn't give us any detailed information as these names are giving. This name specifically tells us what exactly is happening in a reaction. But pepsin, trypsin kind of names have been used for last so many years. So we are still using them. But when we go as per technical classification, this is the most recent one. And now with this nomenclature and classification thing done, we are almost done with this chapter. In the next part, we will be talking about certain interesting things about the enzymes in general.